when you arrive, um, you're going to park your car and then when you've got to the Ketchrigger, you're going to leave it to your port and walk around the building and find our offices. Welcome to our new look office. Uh, when you come in, your boat paperwork will be um, all here. So pick up the one that for your boat, um, and then they'll have all the details inside. The office staff will still be here um, to help you through with anything. Your new look boat pack. So you're going to having picked up your boat. It's going to have uh, details of where the boat is located, the marina gate code, and the marina Wi-Fi code. It's going to be some details um, about um, the yacht here, um, along with what we would want you to do at the end of your charter. There's uh, a useful information pack or sheet um, detailing some useful information that you might need during your charter. Um, one of the really key things is our office hours number and the out of hours number and also C starts number. Then you've got the actual details of the boat um, and your handover paperwork. So when you go down to the boat you just need to make a note of any scuffs or scratches that you can see on the outside of the yacht and any notes that you have um, to do with the inside of the yacht just mark on here. Once you're happy with that a little signature. Run through the inventory on the boat. The red items are um, your safety stuff. Once you've been through this and it does go on to two pages, ring the office and our um, fleet team will come down and um, talk you through from the pontoon um, anything that you else that you need to know. On the return of the um, charter, make sure that you're here an hour, 90 minutes to an hour before um, you're due to exit the yacht. Um, there's some reminders in here about how we like the boat left. Let us know if you have refuelled. Um, in the joining instructions, there's some details about the new requirements for refuelling at MDL. So please do make sure that you follow those. Let us know if you've used the dinghy or if you've used if you've changed the gas. And then let us know if you've got any losses, breakages, damages or defects on your yacht. Just pop those in there. Um, we do like to know about any defects so that we can make sure that we can fix them. And then once you're happy with that, a little signature. So when you're coming up to the office, you will uh, we'll also work through all of your paperwork um, with regard to your security deposit and any additional paperwork that we've asked you to bring. Um, if you need any optional extras, um, please, we do ask that you've ordered these in advance to make sure that we have them ready for you, otherwise, um, and, and paid for in advance, otherwise we can sort those out while you're in the office um, and make sure that you've got everything and all the paperwork's taken care of. Okay, so when you finish with uh, Alex in the office uh, and your paperwork, um, when you come down to the boat, um, go on the boat and go to the Red Bible first, which will be on the chart table, and make sure you go through all of the inventory to check that everything is there, paying special attention to what's written in red, because that is your safety equipment. Once you're happy with everything, then you can give the office a call and one of us will come down 
um, to, for you to sign the paperwork and to answer any of your questions or anything you cannot find that's on the inventory, we will find for you. Um, so if you've got any questions then, we can answer all your questions and also give you tips on the best way of taking the boat out from the boat. Welcome to Spirit. Uh, Spirit uh, has a drop down washboard. So the easiest way to get into it is obviously key in, turn it clockwise to unlock. But then when you take the handle, lift just to take the weight because these are quite heavy. Turn clockwise and then lower down. When you want to lock it, it's straight up that will actually clip in and then anti-clockwise to lock. Hi, my name's Andy. I'm one of the fleet engineers. Um, so when you first come down to your boat, on the chart table will be a red folder. This is what I call the boat bible. In the folder will be all the information about the boat and all the certificates needed on the boat for, for um, charter. So when we first open the book, it will have obviously the boat name and then obviously the boat notes and ship, uh, ship's papers. On the next page will be the yacht specification, which gives you the yacht name, type of boat it is, year of build, the lengths, drafts, beams, uh, also call signs, MMSI number, cell number, and also importantly, the uh, diesel capacity and water capacity especially if you're doing any long passages on the next page we have two pages which is telling you where all the equipment is you need to know on the boat as in batteries engine how to, how to start stop where the shut off valves are obviously where the emergency tiller life raft how to use the water tanks, the anchor windlass, and also the main cell, how many reefs it's got, uh, storm jib, and the helm. So all the information about the boat is on these two pages. On the next page, we have a diagram showing you where all the through hull fittings are, as in head sinks, outlets, toilet inlets, uh, speed and transducers so you know if you get any leaks on the boat have a look round by where the through hole fittings are or anything like that on the next page which is an important one is one again showing you where all the safety equipment is on board and where it's stowed next to that we have another copy of the inventory but to do play close attention to what's in red because that is all your safety equipment that is on board and it will tell you exactly where it is. On the next page, we start going then through the boat papers. So it's just all the standard builder certificates, schedules, but an important one is your compass deviation card. So if you are doing any long passages, you just need to know the deviations for the compass. Apart from that, it is just all the certificates for all the safety equipment and shows you that they're all in date and they've all been tested. On Spirit, we have two battery switches, uh, which are located under the saloon uh, the companionway steps. We have this one which is domestic and this one which is engine. Uh, they will already be switched on on the boat when you get on but if you have a problem with your engine start battery on the other side is another switch which is the link switch. If you need to cross connect your batteries to start your engine we just turn that battery on start your engine and then when the engine's running please switch it back off
On Spirit, uh, on the electrical panel, we have lots of pictures, but we've also put it down there in English that everyone can understand. So starting from the top, we have running lights, which is bow and stern. Top light is steaming light, which is that one. Next will be tri light. Next will be anchor light. Then we have navigation instruments, followed by water pump and bilge pump. Then on this side, this is port side interior lights, starboard side interior lights, traffic is for the VHF, then we have navigation lighting cells, so we have spreader lights, we have lights up the mast, which we turn those on, then we have automatic, so pilot system, so the autopilot, then this one is interior middle lights, AIS and chart plot for the splitter, then over here we have holding tank which doesn't do anything but you have fridge and then you have the 12 volt socket. Up here for the gauges we have batteries one and two, so engine battery is one, domestic battery is two. On this one we only have one water tank, so it's the left hand side of the button tells you what's in the water tank and then underneath we have fuel tank. With the saloon lighting, we have a, quite a few switches. So we have one over the chart table here. There will be another one over above the galley, uh, above the actual cooker, for the light above the galley. These lights on both these lights on both sides are controlled by this switch under here. So we press them on, they come on, and then we can turn and dim these lights down. The other lights in the saloon are done from these switches and it's these switches that will turn on the lights in the cabins and the heads as well. On Spirit, uh, it's fitted with a Yamaha engine so it is a key start. So with the batteries turned on, put the key in the ignition Go anti-clockwise onto glow first, no more than seven seconds, and then we come round, power on, start. With the valve thruster, to activate the valve thruster, we put two buttons together, press in till it bleeps. Okay? Now it's on, now we can thrust. It will automatically turn itself off after about five minutes, but if you want to turn it off, you just press the two buttons again. And it gives you two bleeps to tell you that it's shut down. To stop the engine, we just, engine in neutral, and we just press and hold to stop till the engine stops, and then turn it off. Right, on Spirit you have three reefs. Reef one and reef two are single line, so there's no need to go up to the mast. With reef three, we have two lines. We have a luff line and a leech line. Um, so therefore you pull the two in together and they would bring you down to the third reef. The Genoa is a standard Genoa um, on the furling system. So please, when you're furling the Genoa in, please do not put it onto a winch. If you have problems with the furling system and you cannot pull it in by hand, then there must be a problem. If you can't see what the problem is, drop the Genoa onto the deck, give us a call and we will sort it out or talk to you through it on the phone. 
please do not try and winch your genoa in on the winch because you could cause more damage.